So in the third, uh, fourth part of this uh, unit, we're going to look at uh, what happens when we introduce our time, our independent variable, into the right-hand side of our equation. So this is an example of a driven system. So now um, our, our function, we've got our, our, our differential dy by dt, is some function, and now time is part of that. It's a function of time plus those other variables in y. So in the context of our... Uh, little uh, circuit diagram we've been looking at here. Effectively, what we're doing is we're going to replace the DC voltage source we had with an AC voltage source, and we're now able to study what happens as that AC voltage source operates at different frequencies or with different waveforms, what, what goes on in the system. So the change to the differential equations is actually really simple. All we do is we replace that uh, voltage source um, in the equation for dI by dt, which was a constant, it now becomes, in the simplest case, um, something with a sine wave to it. Um, so we have some frequency omega uh, and time. Um, and that's very easy to be included in our model function. It just simply looks like this. So we just simply add that sine term in um, and we pass again omega, which is the angular frequency times time. So we've added one additional parameter, uh, constant parameter to our problem, which is the, the frequency of the sine wave source. Um, and so that's the thing that we then have to pass in to our, our model function. Um, so, okay, if we go and set it up um, with uh, a value, and I'm actually going to pick here a value I know to be um, at the resonant frequency of this circuit, um, uh, we can go and see what happens. So the call is basically the, the same again. So I've, I've picked the, a frequency which is very close to resonance. Um, and when you go and do the call, um, so you see it's exactly the same as we just did, only now we're passing it in the omega as well. Um, and what you're seeing is happening here is that the amplitude, if you look at both the current and the voltage, it doesn't die out, that, that um, uh, amplitude of, of oscillation doesn't die out, it carries on building up um, and you get some uh, big response out of the circuit. And that's because we're trying to drive this, this uh, LCR, this circuit, which naturally wants to oscillate, we're trying to drive it at its um, resonant frequency. And so you get a big response out of it. If we repeated the same uh, calculation, but changed our omega to some number which was much smaller or much larger, then what we'd see was that we um, had a much smaller response. Um, you always have a certain amount of response. It will, it will reach some steady state where it's oscillating a bit. But generally speaking, the oscillation will be much, much smaller rather than growing like this. Uh, and that is actually mapping out uh, how the, the system responds um, to a driven frequency. Um, of course, we're not limited to putting in just a, a sine wave. We can um, try changing our voltage source for something else. So um, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to model a square wave source. Now, this is not a system that you can solve analytically because you can't write down an analytical function for a square wave. Um, uh, so this is now where you have to solve this numerically. There is no, simply no way you could ever find an analytical solution. So um, my model function, I just changed slightly. And what I've done is I've put this np.sine uh, function in front of the, um, the sine wave. Um, this is where homophones don't really help you explain what's going on. So np.sine, S-I-G-N, is a function that will return one if its argument is positive minus one if it's negative, and zero if it's zero. So what that's going to go and do is it's going to make that voltage source term be equal to V underscore S whenever the sine function would be positive. So for omega times T is between zero and pi, it's going to return plus Vs, and then between pi and two pi, it's going to return minus Vs. So it's going to switch v plus Vs minus Vs backwards and forwards with an abrupt um, uh, switch. And just to go and demonstrate what's going to happen here, I'm going to put the uh, value, the frequency of this sine source down to half the resonant frequency of the system. Okay, the solution is the same as we just saw in the previous part of this unit. Um, we can just go and plug it in. And then what you see is this slightly surprising result that um, we actually have quite a large amount of charging and a respectable current in the circuit. Um, and you see the charging is very much going at the slower frequency of the, um, of, of the, the uh, square wave drive source, but the current 
is going backwards and forwards with certainly something that's going almost twice as fast. And the reason we're seeing this is because, and you notice also that that charge is charging in a very kind of triangular way. It's not like a sine wave that we just had on the, the when we were driving at the sine wave source, it's now a, a triangular wave. And the reason this is happening is because um, the circuit is responding to the higher harmonics of the square wave. So if you think back to maths two, when you worked out a Fourier series for a square wave, it had the fundamental frequency and then it had appreciable um, coefficients for the second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on harmonics. And we're actually seeing our circuit responding to that um, as we go and, and, and look at the response here. Um, and in fact, the, the, um, uh, the charge is essentially picking up the integral of the, um, of, of the square wave, which is why it's going up and down in the triangle like that. So you're able to see here that we're able to go and do a modeling, uh, uh, model a situation which you can't do analytically, we you have to do this numerically, um, and you can understand a bit about what's going on with your circuit.